always like this montage video and the songs and the music. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 12th episode of our Poppy Podcast. Uh, if you're here for the first time, we'll be having our live podcast sessions every Sunday night. Uh, we're having conversations with our fellow Propians and our leaders uh, to get to know them better, to pick their brains a little, and also to share with you, um, to record and, and also to document about our journey, our stories uh, with Propy. My name is Vivian Chong. I am the ESG advocate of Propy App. Uh, I'm honored and, and also very excited to be here uh, to host another episode of our Propy podcast tonight. Um, and, and if you are invited here for the first time, or um, maybe you are listening in to this recording, uh, I hope you've gotten at least a little bit of an idea of what we're doing here for this uh, podcast. So just to prepare you a little, this is not a, a pitching session. This is a sharing session, a conversation, you know, to, to give you an idea of what we do, uh, how we do it and why we do it. So uh, please do come in every Sunday night, uh, get to know us more. We are having both um, English and Mandarin podcasts on, on alternate Sundays. And if you would like to know more about, uh, about Proppy App, please also come on our Saturday's sharing sessions, which um, we will also be having Mandarin and an English sessions on alternate Saturdays from this week onwards. So today, um, other than having a live session, we are also recording this podcast to be posted in our social media channels uh, on Facebook, Podbean, and also YouTube. So please subscribe to our channels if you would like to rewatch, you know, the past sessions or uh, if you would <clears throat> like to be notified of our newly uploaded uh, con contents every week. So tonight, uh, we want to welcome uh, all of our Zoom attendees here. Welcome. Thank you for spending your time with us on another Sunday night. Uh, thanks for being here, everyone. This evening, uh, we'll be having a conversation with our very own, um, very hot and charming, you know, Californian <laughs> surfer and diver, Kenyon. Welcome, Kenyon. Thank you so much, Vivian. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here. I want to thank everybody, obviously, who's attending and for the whole Proppy team to even consider me to, to share this platform with you guys, because, you know, it's kind of like getting a chance to share the stage or the same shades of, of the likes of Yvonne and Wilson and you and Sean and Dr. Max mm -hmm. and all of you. So to even be given a spotlight for a few minutes amongst, you know, these, these pioneers. <laughs> for an hour, it's, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, yeah. it's, it's honoring and it's humbling and I don't even deserve it, but I'm really appreciative. <laughs> you so. do. Thank Th you. No, thanks for being with me, uh, being here with me this evening. So um, Kenyon, Kenyon is our um, Global Alliance Catalyst of, of Proppy App. Um, well, Kenyon, instead of me introducing you, um, why not you just tell us about yourself, you know, how did you end up in the Philippines, you know? for a girl. <laughs> I was talking about, you know, what happened in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's a long story, you know, and, and my story goes all the way back to the beginning. We don't need to go that far, but, you know, <laughs> to kind of bring you guys up to speed as far as... Uh, well, we have an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I can sum up my life in an hour, I have not had a very exciting life, but I will do my best. Um, mm. But no, uh, I uh, originally, you know, I'm from the United States. I was actually born out in Colorado, but ended up in California. And, um, you know, was very much uh, uh, kind of an out, out of the box thinker and, mm -hmm. and really didn't kind of fit into a lot of the way that, you know, the American dream and a lot of the, the things that society was telling me I was supposed to do. I was very, very passionate about life and very inquisitive. And, um, you know, so my early, my early years was actually very similar to Wilson in his story. Um, mm -hmm. and I was really interested in, in philosophy and religion and spirituality. And so for a lot of my younger, my younger years, I was really kind of set off on a quest looking for truth, you know, and that was kind of wow. my journey. And, and that journey really led me around the world for the first time. I was, uh, I was only 20 years old when I first started kind of really traveling and I said traveled all around the world and the basis of my traveling was like a, a quest for truth right I, I went to all the most kind of significant places around the earth like you know India and Israel and all of the like sacred mm. sites and I got a chance to meet the locals and, and, and kind of study and pray with the Buddhists and study and, and pray with the with the you know the people in Israel and the Muslims and everything else wow. as a, a first-hand experience so that really gave me like a deep, a deep drive mm -hmm. to, to want to be of service. And, and, and so uh, the early years of my life was really about, you know, seeking truth and giving back. You know, I didn't think too mm -hmm. much about money back then. I wasn't too concerned about 
uh, the material wealth or success in the way that most people think, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what set me to give you more of a global perspective, um, which is, you know, partially why I think I ended up living abroad. You know, uh, mm -hmm. so many people ask, you know, you're from America, you're from California, it's such a beautiful place. Yeah. You know, how did you end up living out in the People wanted to move there. Yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people think I'm crazy. Like what, what they would give to go to live there. And I suppose in my heart, I feel um, I feel like very at home in Asia. Mm -hmm. I feel like I felt like philosophically, culturally, uh, I, I feel very in touch with Asia. And, and I can't specifically say one country or another, like, you know, India and Chinese mm -hmm. culture and Southeast Asian culture. And I, what I found here in the Philippines mm. is kind of a good representation of what I am, which is kind of like an East meets mm. West. You know, how long how long have you been in in the Philippines? Ten years. Oh, no, wow. actually, going on eleven years. Uh, oh. But I haven't exclusively been living, you know, in in Manila the whole time. I've spent mm -hmm. a lot of those years traveling and working all throughout Southeast Asia. You know, all over China, all over Southeast mm -hmm. Asia. I've been to every every country in Asia multiple, multiple times, whether it's through pleasure or work. So mm -hmm. I really feel at home here. It's, and more than anything, I feel like it's the land of opportunity. I mean, everybody <laughs> says, oh, why don't you want to go to America? Because it's a lot of opportunity. Yeah. I see it the opposite. I, I think the mm -hmm. opportunity is out here in Asia. So that's mm -hmm. part of the reason that made me kind of stay. That was the... Right. Uh, yeah, it seems like you are really enjoying yourself in the Philippines as well. Because you, you just came back from your from your um, diving trip today, right? <laughs> yeah. So mm. on, a, on a personal level, I, I, I love the weather of Southeast Asia. Mm. I think, you know, there in Malaysia, it's very similar, right? I love the tropics. I love the beaches. Mm. I love the oceans because, you know, I, I'm kind of into surfing. I'm into diving. Yeah. And, and at, at my core, I'm a beach bum. At the end of the day, if I'm on a beach, I'm happy. I, I don't need much else. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, Philippines has got a lot of that. Malaysia has got a lot of that. I've actually mm. spent some time out in Malaysia and Singapore mm -hmm. and it's just as beautiful. I mean, it, mm -hmm. if not more so, but um, yeah, I yeah. just got back from a four and a half, five day dive trip at about wow. eight under my bell. It's really fantastic. So, wow, you've had your um, um, you know, retreat after, I you know, yeah, it's been tough. You know, this COVID thing has been hard on everyone. Mm. I, I know it's spiking there again here in the Philippines, it's been spiking. And so we went back into like a full on lockdown mode. And, and just when we were starting to give a little bit of freedom, you know, I was starting to get excited to like get out there again, whether it's through work or travel, you know, they kind of took it away from us. So uh, a friend of mine has got some contacts with the local authorities in, in, in the mm. Congress and he was able to set up a sneaky mm. route out of town. So it, it was- really I think uh, that's what's um, happening here in Malaysia as well. You know, we were we were beginning to 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 have a, a little bit of freedom, but it seems like in these few days that the, the cases have been, you know, uh, spiking again. We don't know how, how much more um, freedom we, we will be having. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it's been really difficult, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, not just here all around the world. I mean, Europe has been hit hard. America's been hit really hard, although they don't yeah. seem to care about the restrictions. That's why it's so mm -hmm. bad there. You know, they just, yeah. they just go on and live their lives and the numbers just keep spiking. Mm -hmm. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll get better because, you know, for one, I can't wait to come out to Malaysia and meet you personally and, yes. and the whole team and meet up yeah. with my old friends there. And, and, you know, that's really something I'm looking forward to. Mm -mm. So. Yeah, but it's it's good to to I know we we still can, it's it's good that we can you know still uh, uh work you know from from different different places we can everything is you know digitalized everything's online now you know we were talking about opportunities in in the Southeast Asia in the Philippines you know do you want to uh, maybe talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, the you know, uh, mm. talking about the opportunities and one of the reasons mm -hmm. that's kind of you know uh, inspired me to stay here in Asia is mm -hmm. is it's it's booming. It's on fire mm -hmm. and on a lot of levels. I mean, first we can talk about like, you know, the, the emergence of technology, you know, that's kind of happening simultaneously, you know, Silicon Valley, China's coming up, Southeast Asia's coming mm -hmm. up. These are really strong places for startups and technology and a lot of mm -hmm. revolutionary stuff. But, you know, unlike in, um, let's say Silicon Valley, it's like, mm -hmm. it's so hard to compete there whether you're an app or a startup and everything, because there's so mm. much money there, there's so much competition, there's so much talent. 
it's like yeah. a bunch of whales and sharks swimming together. So if you're if you're a small fish, mm -hmm. you don't have a much of opportunity there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that Southeast Asia is is rapidly becoming a hot market, if not the hottest market, for talent mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. for startups because you know it's still relatively cost effective. You know, cost of living and yeah, overhead is still right. mm -hmm. it's, it's a fraction of the price of California. I can't. That's, yeah, an, that's another that's reason true. why it's easier to be here but mm. um you know it, it's also we're still considered developing countries out here you know and yeah. so that leaves a lot of room of opportunity for people to come in with, with big ideas and and huge for real estate and development mm -hmm. and property because there's so much development that still needs to be you know to be done mm. uh, major infrastructure projects all the way down to to the basic you know uh rural um planning and stuff like that so there's, there's yeah. a lot of growth urban planning is, is and yeah unlike in america you know a lot of the infrastructure and a lot of the cities they're they're kind of established they're kind of built mm, there's not a lot of that true. happening whereas that's here true. these these new cities like these smart cities are starting to pop up and that's exciting you know because they can take mm. all the latest technology and incorporate it into these amazing smart cities utilizing all this new technology it's not really happening in America. I mean, the cities are mm -hmm. established. Like you know, every once in a while you get a new bit, you know, new high rise. But for the most part, you know, you don't mm -hmm. see a lot of that happening. So, I think it's fascinating to watch how rapidly things grow out here, how fast the development mm -hmm. is, how up and coming the talent is. Mm -mm. You know, just like everybody's been talking about lately, you know, uh, Grab, you know, making a forty billion dollar uh, yeah. IPO coming right out of Malaysia. I mean, so. I think the eyes in the whole world is now looking mm -hmm. at this region is like they're a major mm -hmm. player. They're, they're here to stay. They're on the scene. And whether you're coming out of Vietnam, Malaysia or Philippines that, you know, it's here to stay. And, and I think it's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, it, 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 uh, the, the, the startups, you know, the tech technology startups in, in, in Asia, they, they are, you know, they are brave enough. They are courageous, you know, to, to go on, you know, and, and uh, um, that's why it's booming because, um, there are also, you know, this young, very young, um, tech savvy, um, um, population in 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 this Southeast Asia region, you know. So the market is there, you know. Uh, so there are a lot of tech startups, you know, starting up in in Southeast Asia, you know, to, to really satisfy this this group of people. Mm. True. You know, yeah. in, in 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 some ways, you know, people look at Silicon Valley as like the technological innovators, and in some way, that's true. But I've also seen that the trend, it's been in Asia that has have pushed it. You know, Asians have really been one of the leaders in, in cryptocurrency and blockchain. And mm -hmm. I have a lot of passion and enthusiasm for that industry. You know, I, that actually, mm -hmm. that's where my roots with Wilson go back, you know, very deep. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's been largely Asian that, 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 that brought it to the world because even we don't sure who, uh, sure, not, not, not yeah. in this, where it came from, that I, Nakamoto, <laughs> whatever. Was it? <laughs> the the founder of Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, Satoshi, the so-called. You know, yeah, Satoshi yeah. Nakamoto. Mm -mm. But it's been Asia. You know, it's been Asia that's really helped. You know, boom this, and um, mm. so that's just an indication that that you know things are changing, and, and um, you know, I think fintech out here in Asia and China was mm -hmm. way further than 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 America, and and so a lot of these you know, adapting to online portals and online finance and DeFi and cryptocurrency. A lot of it was actually, whether, whether it started, it was kind of getting bigger in Asia. And I think we can see that with like mm -mm. You know, your Ant Financial, Alibaba and all these massive Asian companies. So. Yeah, exactly. I, I think um, it's also, so it seems like, you know, we are really at the right uh, timing as a, as a tech startup, you know, in, in, and in property, we definitely have, you know, the, the right uh, resources and, and also the dream team, you know, to build this. Um, so can you tell me, you know, how, how did you first learn about property? You know, what did you think about property, you know, when you first um, heard about it? Um, yeah. Well, it, it, it's, it's a great story. I mean, mm. you know, and it goes back, what, five, six years now, so almost pushing on seven years when, you know, I was very, very lucky to be working, um, you know, primarily out of Hong Kong, touring around, speaking mm. about Bitcoin, educating people about blockchain. And out of that, not only, you know, was born a beautiful, passionate, like, uh, you know, um, 
drive to to educate the world about blockchain and cryptocurrency but also was born was a was a lifelong friendship with wilson oh. as we all know wilson is is he's we all have the words you know call him a pioneer a visionary uh, just an overall yes. good person but um I, I look at him like like a brother and um mm. i've been lucky enough to kind of be to be work with him back then and share the stage with him, which is some of my mm. most proudest moments, but also, you know, some, all the wisdom that he's departed to me over the years and the opportunities he's kind of thrown my way. And there's been a lot of opportunities going back that I have missed. Mm. I should be a billionaire. I should be a Bitcoin billionaire <laughs> right now. And I'm not saying, I mean, I've been on stage talking about Bitcoin yeah, would be $10,000. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I, I didn't. What happened? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't follow through with my own words and, and mm. Wilson was there so many times, yeah. you know, telling me about you know, Ethereum in the very beginning before it's even launched and all of mm. these cryptocurrencies. And, and, and Wilson just, would say, see, told you so. Exactly. <laughs> and so there's been a lot yeah. of these opportunities. And, and so Wilson's the kind of person that, you know, when he knocks at the door, you answer, you know, and mm. if you don't listen to him once, you realize, oh, I missed another missed opportunity. You don't listen to him twice. Ah, another missed opportunity. Well, I always told myself, uh, you know, if he came well, next time he comes knocking, I'm not going to let that opportunity pass. And so when he came and approached me with Proppy, um, instantly he had my ear. Uh, and I instantly fell in love with it. And I'll tell you why. Wilson and I have, you know, similar, you know, lots in common in terms of, um, you know, loving deep innovation, game-changing technology, you know, disruptive technology, stuff that's futuristic and that will someday, you know, change the world. Yeah. But a lot of this stuff is, is uh, you know, it's, it's not ready yet. Like, it's just the mm. early stages. And I've worked with a lot of startups that are like this. And so it's a lot of sweat, blood, and tears. And, mm. and it just doesn't quite have enough momentum to really get going yet because it's going to take time for these things to grow mm -hmm. and when he started talking to me about you know uh what crappie was and in the idea behind it yeah it kind of gave me chills because i was like yeah this is it we can in incorporate all of this technology that, that that we know and that we love and that it's going to change the world but let's bring it back to basics let's bring it back to the most fundamental mm. industry that ever was and that and that's property it's real estate it's yes, your home yes. it's your basic needs and and to be able to kind of bridge that gap it's yeah. no longer trying to to educate the world you know because wilson knows this better than anybody trying to educate people about what is bitcoin and everybody's mm -hmm. like oh you're a scammer mm -hmm. you're a, what you get out of right. here you know with your you know when you start talking about real estate when you start talking yes, about property yes. in your home it's like we, okay. we have some you know a uh, 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 current uh, uh, property platforms as well in in the region you know some big big players what what do you see in property you know that could maybe emerge as the next big thing you know <clears throat> well from what i can tell and whether it's locally mm. here in southeast asia or even malaysia specific and even america is that even these big boys, these big data companies, these real estate portals are pretty simplistic. They're running the same platform that they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it seems like, mm. you know, yeah. and it's also, it doesn't seem very, it doesn't have a lot of depth. It's really kind of yeah. a one layer thing. And mm -mm, I don't true. want to take anything away from them. I mean, they're worth a lot of money. They're successful. Mm -mm. I, I would love to have started, you know, Property Guru 15 years ago, but yeah. The fact of the matter is, I think I think it's uh, like everything. Technology evolves. Smartphones are evolving. Our apps, our portals, mm -hmm. everything is evolving, and they and they don't seem to be. And I think that's why it's now time for mm. the next step for the for the evolution of this type of industry. And I think mm -mm. that has to do with incorporating all this revolutionary futuristic technology mm -hmm. with this fundamental industry, but incorporating a wider grasp to bring it all into one place to make it easy right. and efficient and bring it all in one place. I mean, right. everything yeah. that you can think of when it comes to your home, to your house, mm -mm. to your things, to your livelihood, to your peace of mind, all in one place, efficient, smooth, advanced, you know, the opportunity there is limitless because from what I can tell, it's not being done. And so, it's kind of just like a mm. no brainer. Like, why would you not want to get involved and invest? And so that's why I'm very proud to say, 
I am an investor. I, mm -hmm. I was able to invest on a seed level. And, you know, that's very exciting for me because I, that's an opportunity I didn't miss. And mm. I hope we have this conversation in 10 years when I say, I am yeah. a billionaire. I am I'm not a Bitcoin billionaire, <laughs> yeah. I'm a property billionaire. I didn't miss this boat. That's I missed right. the other boats, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> I hope I'll be able to say the same yeah, as well. That's right. Yes. <laughs> We all will. Everybody here in yeah. this group, we're going to be having this conversation mm, mm, mm. on my yacht because the first thing I do with my billion dollars is going to buy a boat and you're all invited. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, awesome. um, you know, I, um, uh, we are also here today to, to um, um, tell our stories, you know. Um, uh, maybe you tell us uh, more about uh, uh, yourself, you know, what is your proudest moment and, and your biggest challenges that you faced it's a great question, Vivian. Hmm. You know, it, it's kind of threw me into the under the bus on that. I would have to give you some thought, but you know, it's, I suppose, it's the standard uh, question. I know that I ask all my guests here. Oh, no, that's good. It's good. It, gives, it makes you think. Yeah. You know, I think I think you know my proudest moments. There are there there are different kind of different achievements that I'm proud of in different sectors of my life. You know, like uh, uh, you know physically, like athletically, and then you know professionally, financially. Um, I think that, you know, one of my proudest moments might be, mm -hmm. you know, uh, getting a chance to share the stage with Wilson, you know, kind of warming up the stage mm. for Jim Warren, speaking to 3,000 people, uh, sharing my love and passion for, for Bitcoin and blockchain. And, and you know, that, that will be a, you know, a memory that's ironclad, you know, to be in front of all mm. those people and to, and to capture that audience and to, to share your energy with them and to mm. reciprocate that energy and to share the stage with such amazing people. You know, that was a gift. That was, that was a life gift. Um, wow. So for professionally, mm. that that's one of them, you know, but mm. I have a lot of passion and, and interest in different things in my life. And, you know, I've been able to achieve a lot of different things along the way, like, uh, you know, uh, starring in, starring in a movie. Uh, wow. Started in a movie and I've done, you know, some, anyone some... else know about this? Like, <laughs> did Ivan know about this? No, I, <laughs> yeah, I you would have told me about this. Yeah, I know, you, a... I know you were a model. He told me about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't talk a lot about, you know, past accomplishments, but, you know, I, I, I feel mm. like when I set out to do something and I achieve it for me, it's, it's for me. And, and I, I achieved, you know, I, I got to star in a movie as well as, you know, some so which movie is that? Well, I, I've done about like eight movies, but I, wow. my biggest role was a, uh, a a Japanese movie called Deathmatch, and I was like the gangster who was like you know like setting up the fights, and so mm -hmm. I I was not the main character, but I was like like the number two supporting role. So that was wow, that was pretty, that's big, that's yeah. big. Okay, um, I'm definitely gonna watch this Deathmatch, right? Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I had a copy. Wow. I'd send it to you. But. It's okay. Everything can be found online now. Yeah. <laughs> so that was so that was very mm. you know that was a, a, a very high good highlight for me as well and mm. i think that uh you know uh, some of my accomplishments um you know financially and with business i've become very proud of that you know just the fact that i'm even you know being asked to be involved with the property team and the property family i mean that's already a great source of pride for me because as yeah. we all know property is a family and, and it's a and it's a pool of talent that's not open to just anybody and so to even be allowed yeah. to come and be a part of this I mean it is like everything mm -hmm. I've done I mean life makes sense you know one thing kind of leads to another one door closes mm. another one opens and it just yeah. everything seems to let up to this point where we mm -hmm. are now in our life. Are you aware that you have been you know led yeah. up to you being you know uh, uh, the contribution that you can give to to uh, property. Exactly mm -hmm. and so you know, I feel like I'm ready to to take that next step professionally mm -hmm. and, and everything else. And and Proppy is that platform to to support me, and also a platform mm -hmm. that I can share all of my past experience with mm -hmm. to kind of achieve those mutual personal and professional goals together. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that's good. And, and as far as challenges go, I think um, you know I I, I still I, I've been kind of lazy in my, in, in, in my, um, the, the nurturing and, and maintaining of positive habits. And I've been reading a lot mm. lately, like, you know, a lot of self-help stuff. And, you know, I used to have a really disciplined mind in terms of meditation and my habits and my eating, mm -hmm. you know, when you're modeling, you have to work out like, 
yeah. three hours a day, maintain <laughs> that sexy body. And I kind of let that go a little bit. How many know, like, years ago was that? <laughs> When you were uh, modeling the days when i was on billboards and in fashion shows i mean that was a good seven eight years ago and, and oh, wow. I, I can see a pretty big difference between now and mm -hmm. then and i feel like you know uh there's no reason for that i could have maintained those healthy habits mm -hmm. and so that, that's what a challenge for me to try to i think what it comes down to is this vivian it's balance mm. it, it's fine for me the key to life is balance you know mm -hmm. between your professional life and your playful, like, you know, me surfing and traveling around the world and me working mm. and, and, and building something, creating something, you know, between your personal yeah. and, and, and romantic life and between your, you know, your, your solo individual relationship with mm -mm. yourself and the universe and nature, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's balance. And that's, it's not easy because mm. I can go super disciplined and, and fast on water. Just, just uh, twice in 2020 during COVID, I had nothing to do. So I did long-term water fasting. I did a 20-day uh, uh, fast, 10 days oh, juice, wow. 10 days water. And then later on in the year, towards the end of COVID, I did a 30-day fast, 10 days juice, 20 days water. So oh, eating wow. no food, only water. And it was a, an amazing experiment for the mind. I felt so strong in the sense that I've overcome this this need for food and so that was a really powerful experience but that was kind of out of balance and then i start eating again eating again and now i'm all of a sudden i'm over here and i'm and i'm have no sense mm. of discipline so i've always seemed to be kind of on one side yeah. or the other and i'm really trying to to bring it all together you know sometimes so I, i'm you know sometimes i i, I wonder um, probably you know sometimes I, I i'm also you know facing a lot of challenges in terms of looking for balance but um maybe the balance is not really exactly on like five five on both sides it could be you know bringing this part of your life into the other part of your life i don't know how to you know um put this in word but it could be like um the same kind of maybe you were talking about discipline you know uh, it's the same kind of discipline that we can put into our passion our interest as well as uh, whatever that we need to do like you know and and uh, um the fulfillment the satisfying you know uh, how we enjoy our 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 um interest and passion we can bring it into our working life as well i don't know how you know we can ever achieve that but but it, <laughs> it, it's a great it? goal i i think i think it, it for me it's like the purpose of life and yes there's there's yeah. being of service there's family there's helping our brothers and our sisters yes. and uh, achieving our own full potential and i think the way to do that is a sense of balance. It is just what mm. you said. It's incorporating the things that you develop in one yeah. aspect of yourself and taking the, the positive attributes of that thing that you've developed and, and, mm. and putting it into the other aspects of your life, whether it's, you know, discipline or restraint, you know, you know, avoiding certain things, whatever it is. Um, and that's not easy. And I think we're all seeking that, you know, I think, you know, the Buddha talks about like, the, you know, yeah. the middle way and stuff like that. And I think there's a lot of wisdom to that. I think it's I think it's important to enjoy life, yes. which is why you know I I've yet to settle down. I'm I'm still single, uh, <laughs> and, and and it has nothing to do with dating lots of women. It's just it's a matter of being free, right? Not not mm. getting weighted down with the responsibilities of the world yet, because I wanna I wanna be spontaneous. I wanna travel. I wanna love. I wanna live and and, and mm -mm. experience everything I can. But I think there's a time and a place for everything, and you know I think I'm coming into a place where where uh, you know, career and building a company and being a part of a team mm. is really important for me because I've always been kind yes, of a yes. lone wolf, you know, like mm -mm. if you want it done right, do it yourself. And so I've always yeah. taken on a lot of projects, but I realized the power of a team is, 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 is more incredible than anything you could ever accomplish mm -mm. on your own. So that, that's something I'm learning and that's something we need to balance as well. But, um, yeah, it, probably it's, that's how, you know, uh, that's how uh, we can overcome you know, I, I think I have the same challenge as you do. Um, uh, probably this is one of the ways where, you know, it, it can help us um, having the team. Um, actually, I, I do find, um, um, I, I think I've been with Proppy for um, maybe four months, coming to five months, I think. Um, yeah, um, doing things with, with um, um, for Proppy, with Proppy, um, you know, it's, it's, because it's a lot of learning because I, I'm very, you know, I, I'm very into learning. I love uh, learning about exploring new things. 
Um, so it's kind of like an, a, a very enjoy and you no know, enjoying uh, experience for me as well. Um, yeah, and, and knowing new people, knowing you, knowing a lot of you know, our leaders and our other uh, uh, partners as well. It's really, you know, a fun and, and very exciting journey for me as well. You mm. said what you just said is so beautiful because that goes along with the key to life. In addition to what we're talking about with balance, I think what you said yeah. is never stop learning, never mm -hmm. stop yearning for growth, for learning, for exploring, meeting new people, you know, and using our creativity to, to be a part of building something, you know, larger than ourselves. I mean, I think that's very important. And, you know, I, I think it's beautiful that you, you have a, that passion for life and that passion for learning. And I think everyone here does. I think that's the mm. kind of people that probably attracts because there's so much that I don't, you know, understand. And there's so much that I'm not good at. And I, I feel like I can do what I can do, but there's still a lot of growth. And as long yeah. as we continue to be, you know, dedicated to that personal growth and to reach our, it's about reaching your own potential, right? And so mm -mm. You know, whether, whether, no matter what your gifts are, being able to contribute those gifts, improve mm -hmm. those gifts, and then you, you never know, you might, you know, uh, find out something that you didn't even know about before that you just fall yeah. in love with and you're super talented at and, and crap, you can bring that to you and um, sky's the yeah. limit, really. It's just, yeah. it's up to us, right? Yeah, you're right. I, it's um, my, my background is in psychology and, and I'm majoring in educational psychology. I, I run learning centers. So basically it's like, you know, I, I, I can't really connect myself with Proppy as well. <laughs> I can't really connect myself with um, the tech industry. But um, I, I think it's, it's a wonderful uh, journey so far. It's, um, um, I found my place as well, you know, uh, uh, being uh, the property buddy, <laughs> being uh, able to connect with uh, uh, people, you know, it's, it's also kind of, you know, related to what psychology is about, you know. Yeah, so I think that's, that's uh, really uh, one, one thing that I'm very proud of as well. Mm. Yeah, you should be. I mean, psychology is at the root of almost all business because at the end of the day, business is about people. Yeah. You know, it's about your people, your team, and it's about mm. your clients. It's about your customers and building relationships. And what better position Correct. to be in with a good, solid foundation of psychology? I mean, that's beautiful. I, I studied psychology as well. And, and, and oh, of yeah, course you I told did, me about that. I didn't mm. get those big, fancy degrees that you did. But uh, I, I think it's beautiful because the more that you understand psychology, you understand your, you know, on your son yourself, and you can yeah. understand people, you can relate to people. Mm. And, and, People with a strong understanding of psychology make great leaders. And maybe maybe that's your future because you can understand, you know, sometimes even better than people that can understand themselves, their strengths, yeah. or their weaknesses, how to match people and team people up. And so, you know, mm. don't 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 feel bad about not understanding everything there is to do about <laughs> technology and property. Mm -mm. Maybe that's not your thing. We've got great, mm -mm. great minds here in the team that have those kind of specialties. So you bring but I what think you bring being in. I, I think being in this team as well, it, it gives me um, uh, an, an opportunity to really explore um, a technology, to really explore this industry uh, in my own you no know, comfort zone as well. You know, I'm doing what I can do, but at the same time, I get to learn about the other things that I wanted to learn about. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's a lot that, you know, I've been in kind of like the startup scene and the tech scene, mm -hmm. on, on more of like maybe the sales and marketing side. So if you start getting into the technical jargon of, of some of the stuff that, that, that like Dr. Max and Wilson can talk about, it, it yeah. starts going over my head, it, but <laughs> I'm fascinated by it. And that's what, you know, Proppy has a lot of that. When we start talking about, you know, the, uh, you know artificial intelligence. First of mm -hmm. all, this is a fascinating subject. You know, whether you listen to Elon Musk talk about it or Dr. Max talk about yeah. it, it's exciting stuff. And to know mm -hmm. that we're working with this stuff, that we're integrating this stuff, it's, yes. it's that's exciting, you know, that's being a part mm -hmm. of the future. But, you know, I think there's a lot more technology that, 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 that's changing the world. And, and I know that Crappie is, is an integrating in a lot of this. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're right at the beginning stages. We're pre-launch. And so, you know, I think that this Proppy journey that we're all on, we're all going to see and learn a lot. We're going to yes. see revolutionary blockchain technology that's totally mm -hmm. disrupting how these platforms work. We're going to see the yes. IoT and we're going to see AI. And we're, 
-hmm. you know, and you and I may not understand how it works, mm -mm. honestly. I'm slowly may, getting to know will. a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. may never will. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, we're going to see a lot. And, and so it's, yeah. it's exciting to be a part of something like that. Mm -mm. Yes. And, and we, are, we are also here today to talk about you know, our stories and, and our dreams as well. So mm -hmm. tell me, Kenyon, what is your dream? You know, what, what, maybe where do you see yourself in five, 10 years? Or maybe what is the end goal? <laughs> well, you know, I suppose it, it kind of goes back to some of the things we're talking about. And, and it's, it's really trying to, to, to stay committed to that personal growth, to achieve our full potential professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe that's a... a an executive position in Proppy or a sister, future sister company that I could be heading up and taking internationally and, you know, doing interviews yeah. on Bloomberg, you know, something like that wow. would be, you know, sky's the limit, but, mm. you know, and then also just on a personal level, I'd like to achieve that, that sense of balance where, where I can balance my personal and my professional life uh, mm. with my, the fun things in life and family, you know, I feel like yeah. I want to, you ask me what I'm going to be in five years, you know, I feel like I'm ready to, to, to find that, that partner I can take on the world with and settle down. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think that over the, over the course of my career and my life, I, I've, uh, you know, dabbled in so many different types of industries, different types of things I've done. Uh, I think it's really time to bring all of that experience and, and really commit and devote to one thing to to use my creativity and my passion and my experience and to help build something and and and, and see it through because i've started a lot of projects and 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 mm. you know for one reason or another maybe the project kind of fizzled out or i kind mm -mm. of jump ship and go somewhere else and i really would like to 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 get on get on to something and kind of see it through on and let it help push it all the way to reach its potential yes. and grow along with it uh yeah. you know so that's I think I'm ready for that um, in my life. So, you know, it, it, I, I'd like to incorporate, my, you know, a sense of family and, and settling mm. down in that sense. And then also you know, professionally really honing those skills I've developed over the years uh, with mm. a sense of balance and discipline to improve them and, and, and hone them in and then just be the best I can be no matter what I'm doing, you know, whether I'm, mm. you know, doing marketing or speaking or writing or business development or, you know, product development, project management. I mean, I have done these different types of things mm -hmm. and, and I've developed different skills along the way, but uh, we can always improve. We can always get better. Yes. And as long as I can see that I'm improving and I'm growing, I'm advancing, I'm evolving, then I'll be happy. You know, mm. if I see myself getting stagnant or lazy or, you know, less sharp that I start to get, you know, I feel like I'm not moving yeah. in the right direction. I'm not. Then you need a team to push you. <laughs> exactly. I need to... I, I'm one of those. No, you're going to get out yeah. the whip. Kenyon, <laughs> sleeping in again. Yes. <laughs> get going. We got a world to conquer. Yeah, Come exactly. on, wake up. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, correct, correct. So that's, that's, you know, my dream. I, I, I couldn't give you an exact picture mm -hmm. of what that looks like well, i think I, I it's just, good yeah yeah what what about you i mean i i'm <laughs> loving this conversation with you i i know you've shared some of your thoughts and your dreams yes. with other great people but you know where do you see yourself in, you know in the next five years or so like what are your dreams what are you working towards i yeah i i don't have like an exact you know where where i see myself in five or ten years as well uh, but um i i, I do have uh, i have shared this with uh uh, with in the Mandarin podcast uh, last week as well with Dr. Max. Uh, okay, maybe I can share share about this in our English session as well. Uh, so I, I myself, I, I'm a hiker. Uh, I love hiking. I love camping. I, I kind of you know, consider myself a hardcore um, hiker and camper as well. So I, I love you know, challenging um, tough mountains, you know, achieving greater heights, I would say. But um, when I really started this uh, many years ago, actually, um, uh, the first the first few hikes I think was with Ivan. <laughs> yeah, um, and then I got to really you know love the nature, you know. But but then um, I I simply treat it as as a workout routine that time, you know. Uh, I was I was really frequent at, at this small hill near my house. Uh, it's called Bukit Ketumba. You know, when you come over to Malaysia, I'll bring you to all these hills and mountains because yeah, I know you are a nature lover as well. Yeah. 
so so this uh, small hill is very small. It uh, this Bukit Ketumba was about um three hundred meters tall. Uh, and then the total distance of my routine, there are a lot of trails, uh, but uh, the total distance of of uh, the trail that I I always take, it's about four kilometers, I think. So um, it it usually take me about. 45 minutes to complete the whole trail. And because I'm very familiar with this hill, so sometimes uh, my friends will ask me to bring them along, you know. So when I started bringing people, that, people there, and then I found myself, you know, um, uh, fitter than, than most of my friends are, uh, uh, more, yeah, many of my friends. So, but, but then I also know it's, it's because, you know, sometimes because people do other kinds of sports and it's just different, you know, because all these uh, different spots, they use different parts of our body, right? Different groups of muscles, right? So, so I was quite contented then, like, you know, I was cheating myself. But, but then slowly, it became a routine. And then I got quite bored of this hill. So I, I wanted to find something else. And then I started joining other uh, hiking groups, you know, other people. And then started going to taller hills, um, mountains, taller mountains. And then uh, that was when I realized, uh, you know, there are so many more taller mountains that I can, you know, challenge and conquer, you know, there are, there are uh, mountains more than a thousand meters. I think in Malaysia, um, somewhere, somewhere along 700 or 800 meters, it's considered mountains. It depends on the, the, the steepness as well. And then the tallest mountain is in Malaysia is 4,000 4, over meters. And there are so many more mountains overseas to, to challenge, you know. So, so I, I realized I was contented before because I got too comfortable at my own level. And, and I can't really see what's uh, going on with, with this um, much experience and, and much more hardcore hikers, you know, where uh, they are from a totally different level. So I'm also saying this from the perspective of my, of my work and career as well. You know, I started my own business um, very long time ago, maybe I think 21 or 22, when I was 21 or 22. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I, I run learning institutions. I was, uh, I mentioned about this just now, right? So uh, we have kindergarten, you know, we have primary school and secondary school, tuition classes and daycare centers. Um, so life has been quite comfortable for me. I consider myself very lucky. Like it's quite smooth. Like, like everything is quite smooth for me. So, um, I, and, and I also think I do quite well uh, uh, for my age uh, as compared to many people of yeah. you know, my age. So I never really look at, you know, um, the greater heights, which, you know, uh, I can challenge and maybe achieve until 10 years later. So, you know, my age, <laughs> I got, I got, you know, um, bored with my little heels and mm. yeah. And, and I know there's only so much I can see in my own heel, you know, the scene is the same uh, uh, because I'm already so familiar with it. So I think it's time to achieve greater heights with Poppy. So this is my dream, you know, to, to achieve greater heights with Poppy. I, I love how you brought those two <laughs> together because it's a great it's a great metaphor for life, but it's absolutely mm -hmm. true in all things, not just professionally. I I love that, and I was envisioning myself and, and understanding exactly what you're talking about. You're mm -hmm. kind of hitting plateaus, you know, when you when yeah. kind of. And, and I realized this, and, and I think something that that it reminded me of, uh, you know, my goals right now and my in my uh, mm -hmm. challenges is in addition to trying to find that balance and, and commitment to personal growth, something that I feel like I don't have like I used to is, is, a, is, is a hunger. Mm. Because I've gotten a little bit, just like what you said, I've seen the same thing. I've, my life's been very blessed. I haven't had a lot of challenges. You know, I feel like I've, whatever I put my mind to, I kind of get to it pretty easily. Mm -hmm. I don't even put all my energy into it. And I felt like when I was younger, I had like a, a deep, deep yearning like it, people would come to me with projects or ideas I'm like yes let's wow. do it I'm a yes man you know and mm -hmm. I would just take on so much and I was so mm -hmm. hungry to try to get that success and since I've achieved some levels of success and financially I'm very comfortable you yeah. know I don't have any stress I, I don't have that same hunger I did when I was like for instance when I was like modeling and acting mm. and doing different things <laughs> I didn't have a lot of money you know so I was I was hungry for it you know I was getting up early and, and fighting for it and now that I've got kind of more comfortable, I find mm -hmm. myself a little bit less hungry yeah. and yeah. I don't want it as bad. And so for mm -hmm. me, that's like hiking the same hill. It's kind of reaching a yes. plateau. And, but I'm nowhere where I want, nowhere near where I want to be. Like I want to be mm -mm. climbing Everest and I'm yeah. still, you know, uh, contented 
on the uh, on the smaller hills. So beautifully said, Vivi. And I, I, I surfing would... the same wave. Can I, can we say that? <laughs> same wave, yeah, yeah. Like if you if you're surfing like uh, you know three foot waves over and over and over again, mm. you know you get bored. You want to push it. You want to push yourself yeah. to hit a bigger wave or or or, or snowboard a bigger mountain or climb a bigger mountain or mm-hmm. dive a little bit deeper. I mean, I think that's that's the that's part of the joy and part of the excitement of life is pushing ourselves, you know, always kind yeah. of, that's where growth lies outside the Mm-mm. comfort zone. Like I've created a very comfortable life for myself. You know, I've got everything I need, everything I want financially, it's all good. So I'm in this comfort zone and yes. I, I want to push myself out of it. You know, I you know, go a little bit deeper push a little harder, work a little bit harder, get up a little bit earlier, yes. you know, that kind of stuff. And just, cause that's where you want, you know, growing and pursuing and, 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 uh, and I, I, I never want that to end because I think mm. that's the key to one, one of the keys to a happy life is, is that. And so yes. I think Ed Proppy is a great platform for that because there's a lot to do. I mean, yeah. you know, and, and it's not going to be easy. We have, we have an amazing team, but the world is full of amazing people. There's apps that are launched every day. Exactly, there are, yes. There's competition on every corner. Mm-mm. Technology is changing things up all the time. Yes. And so, you know, it's not going to be, you know, the easy road. Yes. Like we're really going to have to work hard. Exactly. We're going to have to get up early. We're going to have to put in the time. And so um, it's, nice, it's nice to work with people with a similar mindset. Yes. It's nice Mm-mm. to have, have a direction, like a, a focused uh, group direction of, mm-hmm. of our goals and what we want to achieve together and I think it's very powerful to have people to help keep us accountable and that's where that yeah. team comes in you know because if mm-hmm. you're just kind of doing your somebody own somebody there to whip you yes <laughs> so, sometimes we need we need people our peers to be like that yeah. mirror to show us mm-hmm. hey you know hey Ken you know and, and Wilson is great at this he, he'll call yeah. me out he's like you know hey you know what's going on with you uh, you know you're kind of falling off the radar again Mm-mm. or whatever, you know, he, he likes to, uh, you know, be a mirror and show you, Hey, you know, Mm-mm. look at yourself, you know, yes. are you doing what you want to be doing? Yes. Are you achieving the things you want to achieve? And we as peers and as, as colleagues, one of the greatest things we can do to each other for each other is that is kind of hold up that mirror and, and just be a supportive person, but also hold each other accountable for our goals. So, mm. you know, if I have set timelines for myself that I'm not that I'm not meeting, then I totally expect and, and, and hope that you guys will take the initiative to call me out on it. Call me mm. out on my, on my, uh, Hey, you went diving again, instead of doing what we needed you to do. Hey, <laughs> come on. Fishes aren't going anywhere, buddy. It's time to work. Yeah. So yeah, that's, mm. that's, that's part of that, you know? Yeah. I, I think it's definitely um, a very exciting journey. I know with, with Proppy, you know, um, and, and chasing our dreams, achieving our dreams together. Yeah. Do you, do you have any you know words uh, to say to our um propians or or um yeah even even saying he will remind <laughs> you he will remind you on this <laughs> whatever <laughs> what you will be saying. I know <laughs> he will. I I I, I yes. saw him in my mind. I was like, good. He gave me permission. Get ready for yes, it, buddy. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know. You know that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any more words to you know to say to our um audience? You know, uh, those of uh, people who may be listening in uh, or watching uh, our recording before we end this uh, session for tonight? Well, for all the propians that are here right now, I just want to say you guys are rock stars. You're awesome. Uh, You know, I don't know most of you personally. I look forward to knowing you. Mm. And and I think there will come a time when when I will be able to be more physically present and more uh, involved on a day-to-day basis. I mean, Mm-mm. being here, there's only so much I can do from afar, but I'm going to support in whatever way I can. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and I think that we're all very lucky to be here and it, it's an exciting time. So it's just honored to be a part of all of the family. And for anybody who's watching this, you know, days, weeks, months, years down the line, you know, you heard it here first. Croppy, get on the boat. Get on the boat or you won't get on my boat. I tell you what, you want to get on my yacht and sail around the world, you got to be a propian. So get on the boat while you still can. And uh, yeah, so so thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, thank you all for yeah. even giving me the chance to share my story. And Yes. 
thank you, Kenyon, you know, for sharing with us uh, your perspective on, on the tech scene in Southeast Asia, as well as your dreams and your stories with Profi. So thank you very much. And um, for those of you who are listening in, um, please follow and subscribe to our social media channels. Yeah, If you want to get to know us more, you know, uh, we are on Facebook, YouTube, and Podbean as well. If you have any feedback questions, or, or um, please get in touch with us. And please stay on after this live session for a quick chit chat as well, everyone. Um, we will closely, uh, we'll quickly close this conversation for tonight. And thank you for staying on with us. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed our conversation today with our very own Probably Surfer Duke from Kelly Canyon. <laughs> thank you very much again uh, for being here, everyone. Uh, good night. Good night, guys. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.